Good evening and welcome to Money Minutes. My name is Lisa Pallavi Barbara. Today we are going to talk about a section of the mutual fund industry uh, which set shop in the years after 2007-2008. Now immediately uh, after those years it was a bad time not only from a capital markets perspective as equities were correcting and uh, growth came uh, under question but also from a regulatory perspective it was a pretty tough time for mutual funds. Kaisa Tadjania joins us and he's going to tell us a little bit about these areas and what they have achieved. Hi, Kaizad. Uh, so, you know, uh, talking about these smaller ANCs which set shop uh, in, a, in the period between, say, 2007 till now, uh, it was a very difficult time for them till now. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about what they have achieved and how they have managed to survive uh, during this time? Well, uh, some of the mutual funds have uh, managed to distinguish themselves and launch uh, either new set of products that distinguishes themselves from other established players or some fund houses have stuck to their core competencies. So for instance, if you see fund houses like Motila, Loswal, Edelweiss, so they already had a parent brokerage firm and they already had a niche set of clients. So, uh, you know, their goals were to mostly cater to those set of clients. So for instance, Motila, Loswal had a flourishing PMS business for a number of years. So they've tapped the clients of their while PMS business they've um, you know they've stuck only to equity funds they've not launched uh, any debt funds as so far they've just launched one debt fund but basically that's an ETF so other than that um, uh, you know they've stuck only mostly to um, the equity funds they also started off with ETFs first okay exchange traded funds but then they realized that you know exchange traded funds are really not picking up well but they've stuck basically to the, whether it's ETFs or whether it's diversified funds they've stuck to equity funds Edelweiss for instance um, you know, they said that, uh, you know, uh, everybody has a large cap and everybody has a mid cap and a small cap fund, so they don't want to go down that path. So let's 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 target only H&I investors, your high net worth individuals. Now, uh, by targeting H&I investors, they said that, you know, these guys, you know, uh, they are sophisticated, smart investors, so we'll devise products catering to those needs. So, you know, people like them have uh, managed to distinguish themselves from others, while there are other players like, let's say, Mire or Primerica or uh, funds like that, they have launched uh, those plain vanilla diversified products that others also uh, you know have so uh, you know some fund houses in this lot um, uh, their goal is not to become the largest player or the largest five or the largest ten their goal is to become a niche player there are others like let's say axis fund or primerica fund or media fund that have ambitions to becoming uh, you know large giant players in the future so that's how you know these new amc's which have been launched in the past six seven years have played out Okay, and now the times are changing, things are looking up for, uh, you know, the equity markets and uh, there's a lot of money that's come into fixed income as well. Uh, what's next for them? Are they going to stick to the strategies that they started out with or will they now uh, get into the mainstream game as well? Well, see, the thing is that the industry has really been polarized in the past six, seven years because the regulations have changed in such a way and the markets have also changed in such a way that, uh, you know, the larger players out there, they are really at an advantage to sort of tap the market and consolidate their position. So the larger players definitely will uh, keep getting larger and larger, while the new players, the smaller ones, will have to really distinguish themselves to uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, make a mark for themselves. Uh, you know, because uh, the question that investors would naturally ask is, you know, if I have an HDFC fund or if I have an ICICI or a Birla fund, why should I invest in any of these new funds? So what's the difference, uh, what, what is the different thing that, you know, these new AMCs can give us? So obviously, if these new AMCs, if they really want to make a mark, they'll have to really distinguish themselves by coming up with new and innovative products or, uh, you know, these guys would need to have some kind of a very strong distribution backup to sort of uh, push their products forward. So for instance, Access Mutual Fund uh, is sponsored by Access Bank. Now, Access Bank is obviously a big time. MF distributor so they have an in-house captive distribution that can actually sell their products um, you know there are other uh, fund houses like let's say uh, Mire for instance you know they have uh, they've showed they, whatever the short time that they've been launched they've shown that their performance really speaks for themselves so Mire has uh, the, the performed well uh, on equity funds uh, you have people like Edelweiss and Motilal they are niche players but anything apart from these they really have to sort of any other player apart from these players they really have to either you know offer new and innovative products or you need to have an in-house distribution distribution all right thanks for that kaisat so there you have it there are different strokes for different uh, fund houses but uh, as an investor you can definitely look out for some innovation some changes uh, coming through from these uh, fund houses as well uh, to add to your portfolio that's all from us do keep watching money minutes for more investment ideas and updates thank you